Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. Statistically speaking, you probably play Fortnite. In February, its Battle Royale game mode set the record for most concurrent players with 3.4 million people simultaneously duking it out for Victory Royale. And as it's now available on PC, Xbox One, and PS4 for the low, low price of free, it's easy to see why it's become so popular. But if you're one of the few who hasn't played it, let me sum up. It's you and 99 players dropped onto a deserted island full of weapons and loot, and the last one standing wins. It's all very Darwinian. And that's fitting, because Fortnite Battle Royale is a great microcosm to help illustrate one of the most misunderstood concepts in science, Darwin's theory of evolution. Specifically, Fortnite shows us one mechanism of how evolution can occur, a process called natural selection. Think of each player in a match as an organism. Every organism's goal is to survive, because if they survive long enough, they can mate, and if they mate, they can pass on their traits to their offspring, who continue the cycle of surviving and mating. Assuming all things are equal, that everybody dropped across the map evenly and all found similar loot and weapons, then anyone's chances of winning should be even, about 1 in 100. Then you should only win about 1 for every 100 matches you play. But while that number may be about right for some players, like me, plenty others win way more often. So what's happening here? Obviously, not everyone gets an equal start in Fortnite. Some people go for the loot and player-packed retail row, while others prefer the more quiet but barren wailing woods. While retail row may have some of the best stuff, the competition for it is high, so many will enter, but few will survive. It's the same for organisms in the real world. There's just not enough resources for everyone's offspring so the best suited to the environment survive. This is where the expression survival of the fittest comes from, a commonly misunderstood phrase. It's not who is the most strong or fit, but who is adapted to the world around them the best. A grenade launcher may make you pretty strong, but you wouldn't want to use it indoors. What makes an organism suited to its environment usually comes down to blind luck. We all inherit genes from our ancestors, with some mixing and matching from one generation to the next. Sometimes an organism will get really great beneficial traits, while others will get bupkis. Importantly though, the mutations and variations are random. You can sort of think of the weapons and items you find throughout the map as these genetic mutations. They're guaranteed to happen, but what they are and how they benefit you is a roll of the dice. Of course, the difference between Fortnite and real life is we can swap out inferior weapons for better ones, but we can't change the genes we're born with. This is another often misunderstood aspect of evolution. Organisms don't adapt because they're consciously trying to. In actuality, random genetic variance dishes out the adaptations, and it does so slowly over generations. Some offspring benefit, plenty more don't. If you find a legendary rocket launcher, you're probably going to win the fight against the poor sap with the common pistol. Not always, though. Smart players who are cautious and cunning can still come out on top, even when they don't find the best loot. These players can opt for a more subtle route, like blending into their environment by hiding in a bush, or making their environment work for them by building protected and secluded safe spots. Organisms who aren't the biggest or strongest develop similar strategies too, like camouflage or hidden burrows. If predators can't see or get to them, then they have a better chance of having offspring. So even though genetic variation is random, natural selection is not. The best adapted survive, whether that be genetically or strategically. Now, I've mentioned offspring a lot in this episode, and you'll rightly point out that Fortnite doesn't have a mating mechanic. Yet. But you can think of each successive match as a new generation of organisms. Players who over time learn where to find the best loot, develop skills to win one-on-one -on -one fights, and figure out strategies that overcome disadvantages will pass that on from one game to the next, or in our analogy, from one generation to the next. They'll adapt a little each time until they can win consistently. After a while, they'll be completely different players from when they started. Players who don't adapt are like organisms that are poorly suited to their environment. They won't survive long enough to learn or adapt, and pretty soon they'll be gone altogether. Yes, extinction is basically nature's rage quit. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe for more. Sometimes organisms adapt to their environment, and sometimes organisms adapt to work with each other. That's called symbiotic relationships. And to learn how it can benefit us, check out this episode on Pikmin here. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to keep on playing.